Hey, it's Alan. Welcome back. All right, now we need to create a virtual environment. If you've used Python in the past, I'm sure you're familiar with that concept. And basically what you have to do is get a Python version and a Django version and a bunch of other kind of related files, versions that you're going to use to build your app all kind of together in one place and then isolate them from your main environment so that they don't get updated automatically. And the reason you don't want them getting updated automatically is because once you start developing your app, you don't want that stuff changing on you in the background and messing you up. Now, most people generally use virtual env or pip env to manage these virtual environments. I'm going to be using Conda because I'm working in Anaconda. I like the fact that it's graphical. It also associates a Python version with the environment. But if you've been using virtual env or pip env for a while and see no reason to change from that, that's perfectly okay. Just create the environment using those tools like you normally would. Here I'll go through the steps using Conda. The first step is to open Anaconda Navigator, which in Windows you should be able to do from your start menu. On a Mac, you know, you can use a launch pad or spotlight or whatever. Anyway, once Anaconda opens, typically you want to choose your environment from this dropdown, but we only have one environment called base or root. And if you click environments on the left here, you see that environment. If you choose installed from this drop down, you see all the packages that are installed in that particular environment. But we need to create a new custom environment. So down here at the bottom left, you have to click create. Then in the new environment dialog, type the name as Django2. This is just a made up name. You can call it anything you want. Make sure you choose Python 3.7 or just this just flat out won't work. All right. Um, click create and you got to wait a few seconds and once it stops spinning and you see the little arrow it will be your selected environment it starts off as kind of a minimalist python development thing but we need to bring in some django stuff and to do that you want to click home make sure you still see django 2 selected there and then launch vs code if you've been following along and never closed vs code then you'll probably still see that readme.md file Mainly what we need to do though is get those Django packages installed and we'll do that from the command prompt. You can choose terminal, new terminal to get to that. Now if you don't normally work in environments, this is something you got to get used to right away. Always take a look at the name of the environment you're in and if you're not in the one you want to be in or need to be in, you want to type conda space activate space and then the name of the environment and press enter. If you did it right, you'll be in that environment as indicated by the name at the left of the command prompt. First thing you can do is check your Python version. And to do that, type Python space hyphen hyphen version. It should be version 3 point something. If you're on a Mac, you might end up seeing version 2 point something. That's because Mac ships with version of 2 of Python already installed and it, could be create a little bit of a problem. There's a couple of ways around that. Maybe the easiest way around that is anytime you see me type Python here in my Windows environment, you type Python 3 as the command instead of Python. So if you do Python 3 space hyphen hyphen version, then you get the correct version number. You'll just have to remember to do that every time you see me type Python. And I'll try to remember when I'm talking too. You can also make temporary aliases for these things. For, for example, if I type alias space python2 equal quote python quote and then I type alias python equal quote python3 then the command python refers to python3 so now when I ask for the version of python it's actually python version 3 now that could get hairy with um, older python2 apps that you have on there and remember, it only lasts for one session, so to undo all that, you can type unalias python. I'm not going to actually do it here, I'll just show you the commands. Unalias python, same thing with python2. So basically, you're making those two aliases go away. So if I entered those, then the python-version hyphen hyphen version would go back to referring to the original python version 2. I'll leave you to your own devices on how you want to handle that. For now, we got to get those Django 
related packages into this environment. And to do that, you need to enter the command, this big long conda install command, which is actually in that readme file if you just want to copy and paste it from there. Press enter and it will go and analyze your environments, decide what it needs to bring down, and you'll be asked for um, confirmation. Just type Y for yes and press enter. And this part might take a while. I'll speed it up so you don't have to wait. Okay, then when that's done, you can um, actually you can just close out of VS Code altogether and uh, go back into Anaconda Navigator and click Environments and Django 2 to select that environment. At first, you won't see any difference. Click Update Index. Sync this list up with what's actually in the environment now, and there'll be more packages, including some Django things. All right, so now you know whenever you're in your Django 2 environment and looking at its installed packages in Anaconda Navigator, you're seeing what you're working with whenever you're in that environment. And that includes, among other important things, these Django packages. All right, with your virtual environment ready, you are ready to create your first Django app. Come on over to the next lesson. We'll get right to it.